Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to the 2022 Remembrance Day service here at the Cenotaph in Martin Place and our live stream. My name is Wing Commander Peter Overton, your Master of Ceremonies for the service today. I'm a Specialist Capability Officer in the Royal Australian Air Force Reserve. I would also like to welcome all who are watching this live stream in communities across New South Wales. A very warm welcome to you all if you've just logged on. It's lovely to know that you are watching this from a beautiful Sydney day. We will be commencing the official Remembrance Day ceremony in just about 15 minutes or so from now. We come together today on Remembrance Day, 104 years since the signing of the armistice that brought an end to the First World War. At sunrise this morning, poppies were projected onto the sails of the Sydney Opera House as a symbol of remembrance and acknowledgement of the service and sacrifice of those who fought for our freedom and those who continue to serve. The sails will be lit with poppies again this evening as Remembrance Day draws to a close. This year we commemorate the 77th anniversary of the end of the Second World War and I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the veterans from the Second World War who are attending the service today and who are watching us on live stream. I would also like to welcome and acknowledge all veterans and current serving members of the Australian Defence Force and their families who are attending this service today. We thank you all for your service. We are waiting now for the arrivals of our honoured guests and we will commence the ceremony shortly.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to welcome the Honourable Anthony Albanese, Prime Minister of Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, we now welcome the Honourable Dominic Perrottet, Premier of New South Wales. Every year, nations around the globe fall silent for one minute at 11am on the 11th day of the 11th month to remember those who have served their country during war. This practice comes from King George V's declaration that people should suspend their normal activities so that in, and I quote, perfect stillness, the thoughts of everyone may be concentrated on reverent remembrance of the glorious dead. Of the Australian population of five million, 300,000 young men went to the Great War. Of those, 60,000 died and 156,000 were wounded or taken prisoner. On the night of Monday, 11th of November, official news finally arrived in Sydney after 7 p.m., which was 11 a.m. Paris time, confirming the signing of the armistice on the other side of the world. By 9 p.m., the streets of Sydney were filled with celebrations converging here on Martin Place. As the gunfire ceased on the Western Front, Charles Bean wrote, the gates to the future silently opened. Armistice Day marked the end of the bloodiest war the world had seen.
Originally called Armistice Day, Remembrance Day commemorates the end of hostilities of the Great War. In 1918, after suffering a number of defeats and heavy losses, the German forces agreed to an armistice with the Allied troops, which signalled the end of the First World War. The treaty was signed at 5am on the 11th of November 1918, but did not officially come into effect until six hours later at 11am. The armistice was met by celebrations around the world. People yelled, cheered and danced in the streets. Armistice Day was observed by the Allies as a way of remembering those who died, especially soldiers with no known grave. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just waiting the arrival of Her Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, Governor of New South Wales. We expect her to be here in a matter of moments. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the arrival of Her Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, Governor of New South Wales. The Governor will now receive the Vice Regal Salute. Ladies and gentlemen, the catafalque party from the Australian Army will now mount the cenotaph. Catafalque party, slow!
Carnival party, halt! Carnival party, outwards, turn! Carnival party, rest on! Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Well, a very warm welcome to you all on this beautiful Sydney morning to the 2022 Remembrance Day Ceremony. My name is Wing Commander Peter Overton, your MC for the service today. I'm a Specialist Capability Officer in the Royal Australian Air Force Reserve, and I'm honoured to be your Master of Ceremonies. Today's ceremony is organised by the New South Wales Government with the assistance from the Australian Defence Force, the Returned and Services League of Australia, New South Wales branch, and the City of Sydney. In 1918, the German forces agreed to an armistice with the Allied troops, which signalled the end of the First World War. The armistice was met by celebration around the world. People yelled, cheered and danced in the streets, while others reflected with great sadness the extraordinary losses and suffering from many nations. Over nine million soldiers, including 60,000 Australians and six million civilians were killed. Over 416,000 Australians volunteered for service in World War I. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to invite Uncle Harry Alley to the lectern for an acknowledgement of country. We gather today on land that is sacred. We gather to honour our earliest Anzac traditions of the First World War and to pay our tribute to the wartime service and sacrifice of those on the battlefront and the unflagging commitment of those at home. For thousands of years, people have gathered in this place to share our stories, to celebrate our culture, to remember our ancestors. These rituals make it a sacred site, a precious inheritance of land and ceremony. Sacred to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians whose ancestors nurtured it through time. May we remember that on the 31st of March, 2021, the Royal Australian Air Force marked 100 years of service to Australia. From modest beginnings in 1921, Air Force has grown into a world-class Air Force, which Australia has relied upon in both conflict and peace. Let us remember those served through over that time. As a descendant of the Gujarat people of the far north, I have had the privilege of serving more than two decades in the Australian Air Force. Like me, many Indigenous Australians, we have been welcomed with dignity into service with our Defence Forces. Together, we can all take pride in the courage of the original Anzacs and in our forebears who sought to build a new nation under southern stars, one of shared lands and of boundless opportunity. Today, we acknowledge that heritage with gratitude for its gifts to us all, placing hope in its legacy and in remembrance of the sacrifices that made it possible in that tradition on this land, we will remember them. Thank you, Uncle Harry. 
We will now hear from two of the Premier's Anzac Memorial Scholars, Ms Chloe Hamilton and Mr Ale Alexander Woolno, who will recite the poem in Flanders Fields, written in 1915 by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunsets glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from falling hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break the faith with us who died, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you so much, Chloe and Alexander. I now ask the flag orderlies to take their position on the cenotaph. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now conduct the reef laying. At the conclusion of the formalities, representatives from ex-service organisations and other guests will have the opportunity to lay wreaths and show their respects. Cenotaph attendants will be on hand to assist you. I now ask Her Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, Governor of New South Wales, and Mr Dennis Wilson to place the first wreath. The Honourable Dominic Perrottet, Premier of New South Wales. The Honourable Anthony Albanese, Prime Minister of Australia. Mr Ray James, State President of the New South Wales Returned and Services League of Australia. Ms Queen Dunbar, State President, Australian War Widows, New South Wales. Mr Steve Hopwood, State President of Sydney Legacy. The Honourable Andrew Bell, Chief Justice of New South Wales. The Honourable Matthew Mason Cox, President of the New South Wales Legislative Council the Honourable Jonathan O'Day, Speaker of the New South Wales Legislative Assembly. Mr Chris Minns, Leader of the State Opposition. Councillor Sylvie Ellsmore, representing the Lord Mayor of Sydney.
Ladies and gentlemen, we'll pause the wreath laying for a moment. Would you please stand for the ode, which will be delivered by Mr Ray James, President of RSL New South Wales. This will be followed by the sounding of the last post, played by bugler musician Benjamin Bruno. The clock bells will toll 11 times. We shall observe one minute's silence, followed by the sounding of the rowels by the bugler. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget. Catapult party, a turn, turn. Catapult party presents on. Catapult party, a turn, turn.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We will now continue with our reef laying. Representatives of Defence. Rear Admiral Jonathan Early, Fleet Commander, Royal Australian Navy. Air Commodore Carl Newman, Deputy Air Commander. Brigadier Malcolm Wells, Chief of Staff to the Commander, Forces Command, Australian Army. Commissioners of Emergency Services, Assistant Commissioner Gavin Wood, representing the Commissioner of the New South Wales Police Force. Assistant Commissioner Dean Storey, representing the Commissioner of the New South Wales State Emergency Service. Deputy Commissioner Carl Stewart, New South Wales Rural Fire Service. Thank you, Commissioner Paul Baxter, Fire and Rescue, New South Wales. Commissioner Dominic Morgan, New South Wales Ambulance. Deputy Commissioner Alex Barrell, representing the Commissioner of Marine Rescue, New South Wales. Mr Shannon Kay, representing the Commissioner of New South Wales Corrections. Dr Peggy Brown, Commissioner for the Royal Commission into Defence and Veteran Suicide. Mr Carl Hartleb, Dean of the Consular Corps of New South Wales and Consul General of Austria, representing the members of the Consular Corps in New South Wales. <laughs> Representatives of the 2022 Premier's Anzac Memorial Scholars, Ms Chloe Hamilton and Mr Alexander Woolmo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the reef lane. The Remembrance Day reflection this morning will now be offered by Rear Admiral Jonathan Early. Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, AC, KC, Governor of New South Wales, the Honourable Anthony Albanese, MP, Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable Dominic Perrottet, MP, Premier of New South Wales, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On this day, perhaps more than any other, the significance of uniforms that service personnel wear becomes apparent, as does the responsibility that comes with it. More than two million Australians have worn a military uniform in peace or war, many of whom have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to our nation. Today, we remember them. 104 years ago, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, the guns fell silent. The destruction, which the world had viewed with abject horror over the previous four years, came to an end. The price that had been paid was terrible. The conflict set in motion more than a century of reflection, 
but those who served in the war had no comprehension of what their sacrifices would mean to nations across the globe. <coughs> the British Empire went to war in August 1914 and the Australian forces were in action slightly more than a month later. The defence was a desperate campaign fought by a coalition of nations, by sailors, soldiers and aviators, in the waters and islands to our north and around our world by sea, land and air. But defend they did, together as nations with a shared purpose. In doing so, I believe they showed the characteristics to which we must all aspire. Cooperation in the face of adversity, courage to engage an enemy seemingly without weakness, and determination to learn, overcome, and succeed. None of their outcomes were predetermined. None were evident as they left Australia, and certainly none were easy. The Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Force captured German possessions in the Pacific that September. The Royal Australian Navy's Lieutenant Thomas Bond became the first Australian decorated for gallantry. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Order for leading a party of naval and military militiamen to capture the German wireless station at Bitter Picker in New Guinea. The Royal Australian Navy won its first battle at sea that November when HMAS Sydney won, escorting the first Anzac convoy across the Indian Ocean, destroyed the German raider SMS Emden. The success was a significant moment for a fledgling nation with a new navy. But it came at a cost. Four Australian sailors tragically lost their, their lives in that incident. But in April 1915 came the tragedy that was Gallipoli. Australian, New Zealand, British and French troops landed at eight locations on the peninsula and they suffered a heavy toll. Lance Corporal Philip Robin of the 10th Battalion was one of the first ashore on the 25th of April. He and his schoolmate, Arthur Blackburn, made it as far inland as anyone we know of some three kilometres to a hill called Scrubby Knoll. Robin survived that first appalling day, but a single Turkish bullet took his life three days later. He had been an accountant before the war, a champion Aussie rules player, and he'd only been married for three months. Over the eight months of the campaign, over 250,000 Allied lives were lost. Whilst the Royal Australian Air Force formed after the war, its forerunner, the Australian Flying Corps, was very active in the skies over France and the Middle East. On the 22nd of November 1917, Second Lieutenant David Clark of Number 2 Squadron was in the skies of France supporting troops in what became known as the Battle of Cambrai. Clark was a grazier before he joined the Australian Light Horse Regiment in 1915 and transferred to the Australian Flying Corps the following year. Like many others in the Great War, Cambrai proved to be a bloody battle with nearly 20,000 lives lost on both sides. Clark was shot down by ground fire over Borland Wood and mortally wounded. And like so many others who fought in that terrible war, Clark's body was never found. Over the following years, Australians would fight on the Western Front, sail the Atlantic and fly over France. From a population less than five million, more than 400,000 men and women enlisted and more than 60,000 lost their lives. Globally, somewhere between 9 and 13 million people were tragically killed. The cost was inconceivable, the valour abundant. Communities across the globe felt the toll and we called this the war to end all wars and we said never again. But of course we know that was not the case. Former Prime Minister John Curtin famously once said, be assured of the calibre of our national character. War may see the end of much we have painfully and slowly built in our years of existence. But even though all of it may go, there will still always be Australians fighting on Australian soil until the turning point is reached. There will always be an Australian government and there will always be Australian people. We are too strong in our hearts, our spirit too high and the justice as our cause throbs too deeply in our being for us to be overcome. Today, this ethos still stands true. We stand here over 100 years later because of our fellow servicemen and women stood by this, determined to resist. More than 100,000 names now appear on the Australian War Memorial's Roll of Honour. We remember them. 
we remember their sacrifice and we remember that they did not die in vain. Their service in the direct defence of Australia reminds us of what matters, that at whatever the cost, the price of liberty is worth paying. Their service guides us to that which is best in ourselves, encourages us that we can prevail in the darkest of times and inspires us to go on to better and brighter things. Indeed, it is incumbent upon us to guard jealously those freedoms we enjoy and which they died to protect. And today, more than ever, we must understand the meaning of those three words, lest we forget. Thank you, sir. We acknowledge today over a century of service, both of our veterans and the efforts of the many ex-service organisations and support groups that provide valuable services to our veterans and their families. Please now join the Sydney Mail Choir, accompanied by the Australian Army Band Sydney, in I Vow to Thee My Country. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen, as I welcome Chaplain Ivan Grant, Forces Command, for the prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, as the trumpet's ring of the last post fades and the noise of the world creeps back from the silence of remembrance, the challenge of forging peace remains. This is not just a challenge for governments and militaries, but also a challenge for each of us. As we go from this place, may we always remember the price of the peace that we enjoy and seek every day to honour the sacrifice that has been made by so many. 
In this daily journey, may we draw on the wisdom of the words of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the king they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Grant. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand while the Australian Army Band Sydney play the national anthem. Carafal Party presents on... Catafalque Party will now dismount the cenotaph. Catafalque Party inwards, turn! Catafalque Party, quick! Your Excellency the Governor will now receive the Vice Regal Salute. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight from 8 o'clock, the New South Wales Government will again be lighting the Sydney Opera House with red poppies to recognise the service and sacrifice of our veterans. We now invite representatives of ex-service organisations to lay their wreath on the northern side of the Cenotaph. Following this, we will open the ceremonial area shortly and invite anyone wishing to lay a wreath and pay their respects. We request that you do so with patience and respect for the occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the formalities for this morning's service. Thank you so much for attending Martin Place, Sydney. Thank you and good morning.
officer, we should have been at present arms for the oath. As yeah. soon as he said, please be outstanding, it should have been, I should have, oh, sorry. And it was like, they broke it up to match up with the time. Yeah. Because they were meant to lay all the wreaths then, but they must have been running a bit late. Yeah. That's why they laid wreath, then all that, and then yeah, laid it again.